Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman and Lucy Lehman and today we're going to tell you how to transplant your hydrangeas. So we uh, started a major project here uh, at the flower farm. I had to move like a load of hydrangeas from one section of the farm where they were not happy, they were not blooming. I mean I tried everything. I did all the tricks of the trade and I actually made a few videos telling you how to get your hydrangeas to bloom and they're in um, descriptions below. I have a whole playlist made for you guys and everything that I tried that usually works did not work for these plants. So I said okay you know I've been trying for like four years now and I'm just Decided to move them and a lot of times I'll move plants the way that I move furniture so fall is a terrific time to move your hydrangeas once the plant starts to go dormant so it's November here uh, in my New Jersey flower farm so this is a great time uh, to do this move because what's gonna happen is these plants have at least like six to eight weeks to kind of get established before my ground gets really frozen because you want some time for those roots to really kind of like get settled in uh, you know kind of like make themselves happy in their new home uh, but you can also do this move in spring so know that you know you can also do it in spring which is another good time I think fall is best because when you do it in spring you really have to keep up with the watering because you know the summer comes and then it gets really really hot but uh, for now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how I transplanted these guys and know that I watered them in really, really good when we were done. And now I'm not gonna worry too much about the watering because we have to blow out the water lines here because we, we had like the first frost last night. I don't know if you guys woke up to like some frost. Um, if you can, let me know where you're viewing this from because I love to see where you guys are from. And let me know what the weather's like by you guys because I love to see uh, where you guys are from and what's going on by you. So we had our first frost and I know that I gotta blow out these water lines. So I know that after today, I'm not gonna be able to soak these guys in anymore, but that's okay because it's fall. And so, you know, they don't need as much water as they do in the hot summer months, which is one of the reasons why fall is probably uh, my favorite time to plant and to transplant new things. So, you know, get out in those gardens for the next couple weeks and get them in there as long as you have six weeks before the ground freezes. And so if you live in a warmer climate, know that you can um, do these transplanting, uh, you know, most times of the year, I think a lot of people in southern climates do it between like December and February. Uh, but guys, I've also transplanted plants in summer if they just had to be moved, if we were doing like a landscaping project. So it can be done in summer, just you got to really keep up with the watering. So fall is my favorite time, spring would come next, but if you need to do it in summer, don't worry, uh, you can get away with it in summer also. So um, I just wanted to congratulate some of our winners first from our Pro Plugger giveaway. So last week we announced these winners on our Instagram and on my Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group, but in case you didn't catch it, um, I wanna let you know, I have a little list here, so let me get my cheat sheet here. So the three people that won our Pro Plugger were Jen Kessiner, and I, I know I spoke to you, Dennis Schweitzer, um, I'm still looking for your address, if you can shoot it over to me at Kelly Lehman, uh, at cranberryfields.com that would be great because uh, Dennis you're a big winner and Susan Kahn and I think Susan I spoke to you also uh, through like Facebook direct message and so those are our three pro plugger winners the fine folks over at pro plugger that's that great garden tool that helps you put your fall bulbs in the ground and your summer fall, fall bulbs in the ground um, it's terrific there's a link below in case you're interested in looking at it it's in descriptions and if you saw the video I know a lot of you in comments said where can I buy this thing I have it listed in my Amazon shop page so you can check that out in descriptions below. But we also had a giveaway of my sunflower seeds to some of the folks over on my Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. And guys, head on over there if you haven't been there because I do a lot of giveaways uh, to our Facebook group. We have about 4,000 people there from all over the country and they're swapping garden tips every day and they're showing us beautiful pictures of their own flowers in their own gardens. There were some beautiful flowers that someone from Sri Lanka uh, put up there today, a beautiful hydrangea, so thank you for that. And so uh, Nan Rogers won a pack of my sunflower seeds, Ronnie Maggio won a pack of my sunflower seeds, and Connie Hammond won a pack of my sunflower seeds. So congratulations to our winners. Okay guys, so let's dive right into this transplanting. So uh, I wound up digging, uh, we wound up coming out here and we had some help, we had like a landscaping crew help us out. And we did it on a day where it was uh, cool and cloudy out. So I mean, ultimate conditions are when the sun's not blazing, and you know it's kind of cool out I've also done this like I said in the summer when it wasn't cool and so you know sometimes you just got to work with what you got but what we made sure that what we did was we dug the holes ahead of time 
So um, I came out to this brick wall, and some of you know this wall because I have. A I actually asked the Flower Tribe for suggestions on this wall about what to do with this. It was completely bare. We ripped up a whole bunch of azaleas that were here. They weren't doing very well, and I wasn't sure what to put here. And I realized that I had all these mop head hydrangeas uh, that were in my back field that just weren't blooming. So I said, you know what, let's dig them up, divide them, and plant them here. So the first thing I did was I kind of spaced everything out. I made sure that I had enough spacing between my plants because mop head hydrangeas get really, really large. So I didn't want to, you know, plant them up against each other. It's really important, guys, when you do your planting, especially with hydrangeas, that you give them a lot of space down here uh, by their base. They like a lot of space. They like a lot of airflow. And if you have, you know, one plant bumped up against another plant, bumped up against another one, it gets very congested. And a lot of times you're going to wind up having some fungal issues because of that. So make sure you space them out. Consider what their mature height and, um, you know, how, how uh, big and how tall, how wide they're going to be when they're mature. Because a lot of times uh, gardeners will put their hydrangeas in the ground and they're cute and little and tiny and, and they're adorable. And, you know, they put them like two feet away from each other. And then after like four or five years, you know, they're each like five foot wide and they're, they're you know, crowding each other out. So consider the mature uh, height and width of your plant. And you can find that on the little tags that come <laughs> with your plants. Loose. If any of you have Bernese Mountain Dogs, one of their characteristics is they like to sit on people's feet. I don't know why. So this is one of the things that she just does. So every now and then if you see me knocked off center like I'm on a boat, it's probably because Lucy just knocked me over. So here's what I did. I came out. These guys are the ones we transplanted, but I'm going to walk you through the steps. So we came out to, you know, the ones that we wanted to transplant. And I made sure that I came away from the base. A lot of times gardeners uh, will make the mistake of, you know, coming in really tight and starting to, to chop away and get into that root ball. You don't want to do that. You want to come out at least two feet from the base because those roots are all stretched out way over here too. So you want to make sure that you don't sever those roots. You want to come out at least two feet from like the base of the plant. And that's when you're going to start, you know, kind of like digging it out. So I like this type of shovel to work with because you got like a little kick plate. So what we do is we kind of just went, went like all around the base of the plant. So we just dug, dug, dug. We went all around the entire circle. I'm not going to actually relift this guy up because I just got him settled back in. But uh, so here's so I'm going to I will still explain everything though this way. So we went all around the entire plant. Went around, went around, went around, and then we had like this really giant root ball. And then we went underneath it. You know, once again with this, and we gently kind of nudged it up. And you can kind of see I'm kind of nudging the plant just a bit as I'm doing this right now. We nudged it very gently. We don't want to break those roots. We went around. Once again, we gave it a kick. We gave it a nudge. And we went around until that plant was able to be lifted. And then what we did, I'm going to kind of take you over here because I have some guys that didn't quite make it into the ground yesterday. It started to rain. Then what we did was we kind of tied up all these leaves. So we took these big branches and we put a whole bunch of twine around them because it's really hard to like move these guys when all these branches are, are, are like flopping around. And a lot of times um, it'll start to break apart at the root ball if you have too much movement going on up top. So we took some rope and we just roped, you know, put a little rope around the top of the plant. And then we lifted it and we put some burlap underneath it. And the reason why we put the burlap wrap underneath it uh, especially for my plants in this back field. I have sandy soil back there. You can tell as I'm, as I'm uh, touching it, it's falling apart. So it's basically just crumbling in my hands. And if, if your soil does this, there's a good chance that your soil is sandy. And so if I were to just try to move this plant, like in a wheelbarrow, um, everything, like all the soil would fall apart and then all those roots would be exposed. And you don't want that. You want to try to keep your roots uh, covered with soil if you can, because it just protects them during the move. And so we just kind of covered the whole plant. It's wrapped like a little baby, you know, with this burlap. And we put it in a wheelbarrow. You know, we had like two or three people per plant because these are really big. And then we kind of moved it. And, and some of them, before we even moved it, we separated them. So I knew that these plants were really mature. Um, you don't want to divide hydrangeas that are like only a year or two old because they're still kind of small. But these hydrangeas are, I don't know, I think they're about five or six years old. And as you can tell, there's like some major clumps going on down here. So what we do is we came into the plant and of course, Lucy wants to see exactly what's going on. And we, you know, <laughs> and we tried to find the sections 
that were like big, big sections in here. So as you can tell in here, I've got like a major section over here. Then I've got a major section over here. And we tried to find spots where it just kind of made sense to cut into it. So once you start seeing like a little bit of airways here, you can kind of like just cut into the plant. And what we did was we divided the plant in half. So we kind of took it, we looked down, we removed a lot of these leaves in here, and we tried to find a spot where it seemed like it was a good place to kind of segue it and cut it right down the middle. And we did, we would cut them right down the middle. And then I, now I have two plants where I used to have one, which was awesome, because these guys are gigantic. And um, sometimes when you kind of separate them, you know, it just helps them grow better. So uh, that's what we did. So we kind of cut them down the middle, we moved them, then we removed uh, the root ball. And guys, it's important to tell you that before we even started this whole process, I watered all the hydrangeas in like the night before. So I wanted to make sure that they were happy. I wanted to make sure that they were well hydrated. And it actually makes it easier to dig into the soil when the soil is like a little bit moist and it's not, you know, totally like bone dry. So that was like the first step that we did. Uh, and then so then we got it back here. You know, we divided them and then we already had the holes dug and I made sure that the holes, uh, you know, were pretty much level with the soil because you don't want to plant your hydrangeas too low in the ground. You want to make sure that when you put this in the ground, uh, it's at least like level with that soil or possibly even a tiny bit higher because sometimes it like, you know, resettles itself. So um, that's the size of the hole that, that, we, that we built. Make sure that, or that we dug, make sure that you don't dig them too low. That's kind of the biggie. Like a lot of times I'll see gardeners will have like the soil up here and the root balls down here. And you want to make sure that it's just kind of sits flush with it. And, um, and that's it. And then like we just covered it with soil. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, a little bit of organic compost. I'm not going to add fertilizer right now. I don't want to spurn any kind of like new flowers at this time of year because like I said, it's November. I want my plant to go dormant. So we're going to add a little bit of uh, organic compost because that kind of helps the soil. It helps to loosen up some of the nutrients that are in there and it lets your plant wake up to like a nice, you know, like a, a hearty breakfast in the spring because now all those nutrients are ready to get kind of sucked up. And then I'm going to wait to mulch until my ground is frozen in winter because when I mulch this time of year I find that like the rodents and the critters like to kind of burrow themselves in there and they make a nice little home and then I wind up having like all mice and, and, and rodents and stuff. So I'm going to wait until the ground freezes for the mulching part. But that mulch is also going to help to tuck it in for the winter and it's going to help to keep that moisture in from like the rain that comes. And then I think these guys are going to be really happy. Guys, if you do a transplant like this and your hydrangea like starts to flop like the next day or two, it's okay. There's, there's a chance it's going to go into a little bit of shock in the beginning and it might look really, really crummy. Uh, but hydrangeas are super, super hardy. I love these plants. And chances are they're going to like recover and come in beautifully uh, the following spring. So um, some people have asked me if I would um, you know, cut off the blooms of some of the ones that have blooms on them. You might want to just deadhead those blooms off. You never want to prune your uh, mop head uh, hydrangeas that come in on old wood this time of year because next year's flowers are being formed right now. And see, like some of these buds over here, like this is next year's flower. So if I were to cut this guy right now or prune it back, um, I would cut off like that first flush of blooms. If it makes it easier to move though, guys, you know, I might decide to like just give it like a haircut just to make it a little bit more manageable. And um, yeah, so that's probably a good idea. Make sure that you don't pull your backs out as you're doing this, guys. Make sure you have a buddy or a partner or, uh, you know, someone to help you. Or you can also hire like a landscaping company. A lot of times we'll hire people to come and help us out. And so that's the story with uh, the transplanting. And then I'm gonna make sure that, like I said, I watered them in one last time before I had to blow out those lines. So let me think who else I wanted to say hello to. Oh, I have a bunch of people that we talked to this week. For, oh, you know what, I wanted to show you this uh, tool. It's called a prunarbo. And in case you do wanna prune it, I'm gonna turn this on. It has like a safety feature because these clippers will save you like a lot of uh, the agony of your hands and your wrists. So when you turn it on, you basically, it has like a safety feature that it turns off after like 30 seconds, which is good because it's very powerful. And Sheldon and I have been using this to do some of our pruning. So we're gonna come in here. I'm gonna show you one thing that you can kind of cut back. Like this guy is a dead cane. So see how he's got no new growth, no nothing. So he's pretty dead. I don't think he's gonna have any blooms on, but let's take a look in here. Yeah, see, he's totally white. So any of those dead canes you can kind of take out 
And um, some people like to wait until spring just to make sure because spring is really obvious which ones are dead and which ones aren't. But we found that this Prunarbo tool, uh, we were cutting like uh, pine trees with it. We were cutting, uh, you know, branches that were like this thick. And I was really shocked at the power that this tool had. So I'm going to show you one more time how it works. I'm going to come back here. I could tell this is another one of my dead canes because it's got no new nubs on. It's got no green. Even when I scratch into it, it's white. And so I know that I can kind of cut this guy out. But this just does the job so fast and it really saves my wrist. It saves, you know, like a lot of like that carpal tunnel syndrome that a lot of us have because we're on our keyboards all the time. And I'll put a link to this product below. This is not a sponsored post. It's just a tool that I love. The people at Prunarbo did send it to me to try out. And I have to say, we've been using it like every day since we got it a month ago. And so you can check that out in descriptions below. I have it in my Amazon shop page. And I wanted to thank, um, let, me, let me get my little cheat sheet over here. Check out some of these flowers, guys, that are going out to our Flowers of the Month Club today. These were uh, made with some of the flowers that we have coming up in the field. Beautiful hydrangeas. We've got some, uh, look at these gorgeous, these are from like that burning bush that I have in the front of my house. So let's see who's the who today for the shout outs. I want to thank Victoria today because she bought uh, me a cup of coffee on our supporters page and you can check that out. Thank you so much, Victoria, for uh, your kind, kind support. I appreciate that. And I have that linked in descriptions below our supporters page. And I spoke to some fabulous people this week, either through comments uh, and on the phone. And I have to say, there's a gentleman, he's 79 years old and he lives in England. And I just loved his comment. So let me find him here. He lives in the north of England. Who's my friend here? His name is Brian Walsh, and he lives in Middlesbrough, England. He's 79 years young, and he grows amazing Annabelle hydrangeas. And he wrote a comment, and he said, my neighbors, are, you know, the people that are passing by in my home are commenting on how spectacular my Annabelles look. And he said, oh, I have a little help from my pal Kelly, which I thought was so cute. So thank you, Brian, for that. And I also spoke to a gentleman, and he, his name is Gene Rella. He's from Staten Island. And he was saying that he still has hydrangea blooms that are blooming now. And he said, did that happen to you? And I said, I did. It's for the first time, like at the end of October, I was getting like new blooms on like some of my endless summer. And we were kind of debating why would that happen. We think it's because we had so much rain here in New Jersey and New York. So I was curious, did any of you have like really, really late blooms in your hydrangea plants this year? And if you did, like did you have a lot of extra, extra rain? Because that's the only thing that I can think uh, that was different this year uh, than past years. And then I was also speaking to Murray Buckner. He's from Charlottesville, Virginia. He has a company called Full Moon Blooms, and he sells 20,000 stems of limelight hydrangeas every year around this time, like September, October, mostly for weddings. And he said to me, you know, he was watching the videos, and I always recommend not to prune back, you know, like any of your hydrangeas in the fall. But he did bring up a point. He said he's got all those limelight hydrangea stems that he does cut, and he's in a little bit of a warmer climate, but he says he doesn't have a problem with his plant come the following year, even though he does cut like a lot of the plant off because he's doing these, you know, selling these blooms to brides. So that was just a curious, you know, little little uh, tidbit there. So I'm curious, what, have you, what is, has your experience been? And I do have to say, I have cut back uh, some of my like either limelights or Annabelle's towards like the end of fall, and they seem to have been okay the following year because they come in on that new growth in the spring as opposed to like the endless summer and the Nikos because those guys, you know, if you cut them back, you're probably not gonna get that first flush of blooms at all. But um, I have cut them back and they've come in, but usually I see a lot of advice saying, hold off until late winter or early spring to prune back those limelights. But I have to say it worked for Murray and he's the, he seems to be an expert. I mean, if this gentleman's selling 20,000 stems, he knows what he's doing and he showed me pictures of his farm and they're spectacular. So if you're looking to buy some of those limelight hydrangea stems for a wedding, check out uh, Full Moon Blooms and I appreciate all the comments that you guys make. And um, let me think what else we wanted to talk about. Someone asked me last week about planting fall bulbs in containers and I have to say um, I let you guys know that I do plant some of my fall bulbs that are smaller in one of the outdoor pots that I have in my secret garden. 
and I said I pretty much go in there I make sure that I have soil on the bottom I'll put like the smaller bulbs in there and I need you need to have like room on the bottom for those roots to kind of you know stretch out and, and and be happy and then I just you know kind of cover them with soil and they're happy but I have to say for some of the larger blooms like the daffodils some of the bigger alliums you're going to want to make sure that you take those pots that they're in and they need to be covered and you probably may even need to put them underneath like a porch or someplace where they have a little bit of protection because if you put those larger bulbs in the outdoor planters, a lot of times they're gonna freeze. And I should have mentioned that last week and I'm so sorry that I didn't, you know, I was watching the replay and I was like, oh, I wish I would have told them this last thing. So for the most part, if you are gonna be doing some of your outdoor bulbs in those pots and you want them to come up in spring, make sure that they're covered, make sure that, you know, they have a little extra protection and I'll try to make you a full video on that. But there's a lot of information if you just Google it. They have like a lot of those gardening, um, like gardening know-how I love. They give you like step-by-steps on how to do that. So I wanted to make sure I gave you the, the, the whole story with that one. And um, I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover with you guys. And guys, please know that I have those three online flower courses uh, that are live. There's a link to those below in case you were interested in buying those for yourself or for a loved one. And it teaches you how to grow fresh cut flower gardens in your own backyard. And then I give you uh, instructions on how to make beautiful arrangements from them. So you can check that out in descriptions below. And I will see you uh, next Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. And guys, if I ever can't make it live, know that I will post a video uh, at 10.30 a.m. every Wednesday. So I will try to be here every Wednesday, 10.30 a.m. Most of the time, like 99.9% .9 of the time, I'll be here live. And the other times, I'll make sure that a fresh video comes up and I'll let you know, you know, some brand new garden tips. So if you guys have any questions, I'll take a couple questions now. I'm gonna flip around to the other side of the camera. And uh, if you guys have some, some questions, I'd like to, to kind of tackle those uh, right now. So let's see who's out there. If you can, let me know where you're from because that always, you know, makes me really happy. And um, here's our Facebook group in case you guys wanted to hop on over there. And I have a link to that in descriptions below. It's so fun to see new members there every week. And here's our Instagram. We're at Cranberry Fields. So in case you guys want to hop on over there, say hi. And guys, know that I do a lot of giveaways on both of these. Like I like to give away my sunflower seeds uh, that we kind of harvest from the garden. So uh, we don't sell them, but I do like to give them away to the flower tribe. So check that out. I don't see any comments from you guys today. I hope that I didn't do my... So every now and then I'll do like a wrong toggle switch in the back end. And I might have been a knucklehead and did that uh, today. Possibly I did. Any questions, guys? Can you guys, uh, if you put anything in comments, can someone just put something in comments and I'll see if it comes up on my end because, oh, there you go. Oh, thanks, Lynn. How are you? Flower Tribe is very helpful. They've helped you several times. Oh, that's good to know. I know. I love the Flower Tribe. They have such great, great answers to all those garden questions, right? And it's so cool that people are from all over the world. So chances are somebody is going to be in your planting zone as you're asking those questions. All right, guys. So listen, I will see you in the next video. And I've got more hydrangea. Oh, and I also wanted to let you know that I'm going to tell you guys how to um, transplant and move your peonies and how to divide those. So maybe I'll do that next week or the following. Uh, but this is also a very cute Christmas gift to give somebody. Hey, Z. Oh, have a blessed day, too. Thank you. Hey, Jacqueline. Um, You've been a great help to me. Oh, thank you as a new gardener. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you for that. I always appreciate the, the, the kind comments. You're from Maryland, uh, Princess, <laughs> Princess R. You're from Maryland, Zone 7B. Oh, thank you so much, guys. The comments, I really appreciate. They help me a lot. They help my YouTube algorithm. So if you can give me a, a thumbs up or a comment, uh, that me it means the world to me. It really does. Andrea, your hydrangeas have ended the season with lots of pest mold and black spots. What should I do? All right, great question. So check out my hydrangeas. I've got a lot of these, you know, black spots and the browning. And a lot of that is caused by just like that overhead uh sometimes they get wet from rain and um it's just like those temperatures cool up there's not much you could do about it if you do have mold issues i'd suggest really getting rid of those uh, leaves because you don't want that to transfer and especially pests so if you have the pests and the mold i would definitely remove those branches and just get rid of them don't mulch them into your garden bed i would just like toss them out because that's only going to present more of a problem. But if they're just a little bit brown like this, I would just kind of leave them alone. But the mold is a whole nother issue if they're like really molding. I'm sorry, someone just asked a question and I totally missed it. Sometimes when I'm yammering, uh, I can't read. I can't read and talk at the same time. Maybe send it through one more time. And in the meantime, guys, I really appreciate all of your support. It really uh, helps me when you guys ask questions. And I love that you're all jumping over to that Flower Tribe Facebook group. 
All right, guys. So listen, I'll see you in the next